A lot of the time, yes, my brain does work just like this. No preamble, no planning, just jumping straight in and, you know, making something. One minute I'm browsing Facebook and the next minute I'm building an axe. Sketching out scale before I even had an idea of exactly what I was going to be designing. There's going to be a cardboard axe, there's going to it's gonna have wings, and now you know basically as much as I did at that moment. So when I went out with my list of cardboard to look for, I was thinking about the main shape, and then that, that will be one piece that goes through, and then each side will have a smaller, but there will actually be two of those to go on each side of the main piece. And something I was thinking about while I was out there, was the grain of the cardboard and how I wanted to optimize the strength of it. This is the longest piece. I knew that I wanted to have the grain running this way, so I had to find something that was 26 inches edge to edge. But then to reinforce it, I wanted these pieces to be this way, so then it would be like cross hatching when it's all glued together and just give it rigidity in more directions. And so I had to look for 26 that direction and 20 this direction. And trying to minimize the overage, underage, I was gonna have just to like have the most efficient use of the materials. After the patterning and tracing comes the cutting. Oh my gosh, so much cutting. And this won't even be the end of it, not by a long shot. want a base coat for the edge of the axe to give the part that extends beyond the cardboard a little bit more stability. These are old love letters. These are mementos of past relationships that I keep in this bag because I plan to burn them the next chance I got. But as this is a project about my new name and my new name is about giving up certain things about past relationships, I think I have a better use for them than burning them. Looks like I have more than enough to cover this, which is great. And I can just make some other effigy with other stuff to burn. I'm working so I can get the edges all at once. And it works out that I can crease the pages, slip it over, and use the previous scale to support this one. And so it helps give it a little bit of pointage beyond the, the cardboard. are the bulk of what needs to be collaged. And the sources I have is all this. Do you think I'm going to be able to cover the ground that I need to? Just like laminate this, cut it out, it'll be great. Some of the challenges that I'm thinking about 
are how to incorporate the specifically warmer tones and the more saturated tones into this in, a, in an aesthetically pleasing way. I don't want the various wing pieces to be drastically different from each other. Like they will be distinct, but I don't want it to be like this one's brown, this one's blue, this one's green, this one's gray. And I want to have somewhat understandable gradients of color in each of them instead of it just being my usual slapdash blah 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 blah. But a challenge that I'm taking on in this project is going slower. Even though this is like oh, it could be so quick and I want to have it finished in this weekend. I do want to have it finished this weekend. Luckily, I hadn't thought out any specific things I wanted to accomplish this weekend, so I have the freedom in my schedule to do this, to work on this, without feel it without too much guilt. And so it's like, I'd like to have it done Sunday morning. That'd be nice. Which means probably having the wings done tomorrow night. I could do it in two hours each, but that's not how things work. And then Sunday could be assembling, doing the handle, though I haven't done the, the head yet. I'm still really excited. I got a bear. It's a bear. I'm very happy to have that. Is this going to make me happy when I come to my desk tomorrow? Maybe? feels a little exciting, but also a little chaotic. Do I want to organize this more tonight? No. Don't want to do any color sorting. So I'm just gonna um, zen out a little bit. I'm not intentionally organizing, I'm just looking, taking inventory, not thinking. It's just like the way that I work. If I'm not thinking, I'm gonna end up saying like, okay, what, all the birds are over here. The geometric stuff is over here. All the black and white photographs are over here. Stop it. Stop, buddy, stop. No, don't do it. The idea tomorrow, I'll just have a better grasp of my material. Or I'm procrastinating going to bed. Who knows? Just wanna get down to, to bear. It's just jumping. This is gonna get ripped into so many pieces. So this is becoming sorted by color. Somewhat by color, somewhat by subject matter. I'm using pieces from the Tropic of Taurus project that has been, I guess, back burner for now. So it's really nice to be touching different pieces and remembering that project. So something I'm going to do tomorrow is sort through and identify pieces that I want to be closer to the top. I think I'll probably do like warm to cool, top down, and then, then there will be pieces that I want to be hero pieces, or go mostly on top, not really layered under things. Might try to do light to dark, warm. do it symmetrically working getting darker as you work as it works out I am delightfully sleepy it will be an exploration of color and texture and it will happen tomorrow I promise I'm talking to myself little backstory on how all of this fits together fits together making the axe just came out of nowhere but this year I changed my name to Sid Hawker my old name didn't feel like me this feels like me Sid Hawker and then this year is 10 years since I got divorced the 10 years of making my own way living a completely different kind of life living as who I am 10 years of that, I have now chosen the name change. So there's a lot of self-determination, self-identity in that. So using old love letters and mementos from that, that marriage is useful in, it's like a symbolic thing of, of making the axe. And also in that the axe is, will be part hawk, and therefore indicative of my new name. It all fits together. I'm very, very happy. Like, didn't plan that, but I'm happy with how it came out.
last night I roughly sorted by color categories and then today I laid out the four pieces and went through each pile of color and decided what piece was going to go on which wing piece. I did a lot of tearing and scrapping and I still have way too much material but that pile over there is for edging, that pile is in reserve for when I need it, and this pile is going back in the general population. The next step is to take one wing piece, and then lay it all out and start arranging things and gluing things down. Is the hard part over? I don't know. As I was working on this project, I turned to National Geographic for the imagery that I was going to put on the wings. Having any experience with collage, you might know that National Geographic is a great source for images that are beyond the typical day-to-day -day American experience. Unfamiliar cultures, unfamiliar landscapes, things that are not part of the common American experience. But as I was cutting up the magazines and later ripping the images into smaller pieces, it felt a little bit like appropriation, that I wasn't paying enough respect to what was depicted. These are old issues of National Geographic from decades ago that have quote unquote served their literary purpose, publication purpose, but in a lot of cases, the people and places and situations depicted in those images, in those articles, still exist. And it was important for me to recognize the humanity in that and to also sh uh, shine a little more light back on these images that I am benefiting from. Maybe not financially, but I'm benefiting artistically from these. So I'd like to give a shout out to grizzly bears, to red-tailed hawks, and to zebra swallowtail butterflies. These are creatures that showed up and lent their colors and textures to my hawk wings, especially the red-tailed hawk. But some of the less obvious imagery comes from a Nat Geo article about the frankincense trail that winds through the Arabian Peninsula. I know nothing about the spice trade, modern or ancient, so I'm linking to the BBC-produced show of Katie Humble following the frankincense trail in 2009. And while it still comes through a colonial lens, I appreciate taking in some content about the Arabian Peninsula that doesn't revolve around oil, religion, or war. doing tea and breakfast, I'm having to think about how to form the head. We'll go at the top of the, we'll go at the top of the axe. Originally I was thinking about doing an internal lattice armature and then bulking it out with paper mache, but then I realized I don't really have a good technique for having smooth lines on paper mache and I really want some sharp edges to go with the rest of this. I think I'm going to adapt the solid form techniques I was using for these. I'm going to be using this kind of geometric forming technique, more what I use for the small pieces, and then assemble them, so fold pyramids and maybe some cubes, and use those to form the hawk head. That'll give me a smoother, more unified look to the whole thing. Yeah, I'm feeling 
feeling encouraged about that direction. And hopefully it won't take me too long to get there. Awkwardness. I have these shapes that are scored and ready to cut out when I'm inside with my sharper knife and uh, cutting surface. But as I was looking at this, where it's four inches across the bottom and two and a half across the top, I realized that with this angle being less than 45 degrees, I can't cut out this, these in a single piece where the center piece is connected to the fins and all the way around. So each one will have to be a fin like this. Since I'm gonna need four for each side of the cube and five sides of the cube are exposed, that means 20, 20 different little fins of these will need to be made. So cutting 22 of them out of corrugate sounds terrible when I have a ton of like thinner cardboard and I can use scissors. Out done today and I think I'll be good I'll be good picking this up tomorrow even though I have sewing to do but I'll pick this up tomorrow because X besides having all of the head pieces drafted and not cut out but all the head pieces are drafted and I got the wing insets fully collaged and I'm really pleased with how these came out. This was my first time trying to intentionally do any kind of gradient and it turned out pretty well. And it kind of, it came out as an unintentional mood board and like having climbing in there and cameras in there. Yeah, I'm very pleased. But it worked, it worked out to do most of, most of the gluing, a little bit of tape. We're gonna wrap for part one. Having the blade done is a huge deal, but well, the head was a bit of a boondoggle. Once I get into it, the head piece took a lot more work and a lot more steps than I had anticipated. But in the end, ah, uh, well, you'll see. Until then, be good, Void. I'll shout more into you pretty soon. <laughs>